Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. And we'll open the creaking door once again in a moment uh, with an episode of Inner Sanctum Mysteries going back to April 17th, 1950. Uh, Everett, Str- Everett Sloan starring in an episode entitled Beneficiary Death. <laughs> Bromo Seltzer, made by the Emerson Drug Company, invites you through the creaking door for tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, titled Beneficiary Death, written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan. Bromo Seltzer reminds you to... of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you once again into the inner sanctum. Come in. Come on in. Oh, I'm tired. Just finished my spring gardening. Planted a couple of dozen of bulb heads. But I'm sure they won't be content to stay in their new loams. <laughs> That's how things are here behind the creaking door. Whatever goes down must come up at night. <laughs> oh, by the way, folks, I want you to meet our laughing ghost. We call him Silly Willie because it's easy to tickle his fantasy. But Willie's not really so silly when it comes to getting rid of his mates. The first one left him because he started each day by beating her over the head with a club. Well, naturally, she got sick and tired of such treatment. Well, his second wife, a brunette, had a much more interesting... Conclusion. Willie buried her head in the sand at the ocean front. Now she's a beached blonde. <laughs> Horror has many sides. It can make itself felt in an almost hidden, quiet sort of way. Just as it did that rainy Monday morning that Sam and Helen Braden were at breakfast in their small suburban home. The Braden sat in the kitchen nook near the window, the same as they'd done for 20 years. But still, this morning, things were not quite the same. Sam, you've just been sitting there staring out the window. You haven't touched your breakfast. I'm not hungry, Helen. You didn't sleep last night, did you? A little on and off. You're just worrying yourself sick over nothing. Now, business is bound to get better. Oh, there's no use kidding you any longer. The store is on its last legs. The bank refused me the loan. Oh. Said I was a bad risk. Then you don't need the bank's money. You can still raise some yourself. Yes? How? Your insurance. Yes. I begged and borrowed everything up to my teeth, but I won't touch that insurance. That's for you, Helen, in case... Sam, please, listen to me. No, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Getting late. I'm starting for town. Sam, wait. Yes? I wish you'd take the train instead of the car. Why? Well, weather's so awful. Look at the way the rain's coming down. I drove into town in lots worse weather than this. I know, but... But what? Feeling the way you do, Sam, I, I, I wish you wouldn't drive. Oh, I'm all right, Helen. I'll see you this evening. Sam, please take the train. I told you I'm all right. Well, I, I had an awful dream last night. I saw you driving the car along the turnpike, and then suddenly the car crashed, and you were... Killed? Yes. Well, that's not such an awful dream at all. Why, Sam? Well, it isn't. When you consider my insurance, I'm really worth more to you dead than alive. Hello? Mrs. Brayton? 
Mrs. Samuel Braden? Yes. This is Sergeant Landau of the Merrick Police. The police? It's, a, it's about my husband. Yes. His car was in a crack-up an hour ago on the turnpike. Was he hurt badly? I'm sorry to tell you, Mrs. Braden, but he's dead. Oh. Mrs. Braden? Mrs. Braden? Yes. It's only a formality, but uh, you'll have to come down to the county morgue personally to claim the body. Did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Oh. <laughs> Ellen. <laughs> why are you crying? Sam, why did you do it? I didn't want the insurance money. I wanted you to come back. But I have come back. Please tell me you were killed in the auto crash. Just the way I dreamed it. I saw your face. Just the way it is now. Covered with blood. Sam, I only wanted you to live. Why are you talking that way, Helen? I am alive. No. Here, touch me. Sam, don't. You mustn't be afraid. Touch me. Sam, please. There. Feel my hand. It isn't, it isn't cold. You're not dead. You're alive. But your face in that, that call just now. There was an accident. The car was coming toward me. I swerved to get out of the way, and then everything went black, and the next thing I knew, I was standing at the front door outside. But the police found your body in the wreck. They, they asked me to come down to the morgue and claim it. My body? He said you were there, dead. The hitchhiker. Hitchhiker? Just before I got onto the turnpike, I picked up a tramp. I was giving him a lift into town. Wait. What is it? My, my wallet. It's not in my pocket. It must have fallen out in the crash. Then that's why they thought it was you. Yes. Ellen, what are you going to do? Call the Merrick police and tell them you're alive. Put that phone down. But they should know. Put it down. I'm not alive. What? To all intents and purposes, that's my body down at the morgue. I don't understand. This is our chance, Helen. Don't you see? What are you trying to say? It's very plain and simple. My $25,000 life insurance. Now, do you understand? Sam, we can't do a thing like that. And not for just $25,000. Accidental death. The double indemnity clause. $50,000. Sam, please. $50,000. I told you at breakfast time, worth more dead than alive. 50,000. After you collect, we can go away. For the first time, we can really live. We won't have to worry about pennies anymore. Darling, we don't want money that way. All you have to do is go down to the morgue at Merrick. Sam, we can't do it. Of course we can. You'll find us out. The tramp I picked up told me he was homeless. No family. It's all so perfect. Once you claim my body, no one will ever find out. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Braden, just uh, one more thing to be filled out on this form. Uh, where do you want your husband's body sent? Uh, uh, to, to the Winston Funeral Home in Crestview. Winston Funeral Home, Crestview. Now, come with me, please. Sergeant Lando, where, where are we going? To that room at the end of the hall. That's where the bodies are kept. Do I have to go? Well, I'm sorry, but that's the law. But you know it's my husband, don't you? Sure. But the next of kin has to make identification. Oh, Sergeant Lando. It'll only take a second. Here we are. Yes, Sergeant. That, that, that's my husband. Mrs. Braden, how many years were you married? Twenty. Why do you ask? Well, it uh, just hit me as peculiar, but it may be because you're upset by your loss. I don't understand. The body you just identified has been here in the morgue for three days. What? Your husband's body is here to your right. On this other slab. You should have been more careful. You could have ruined everything. I was so frightened, Sam. 
I didn't know what to do. When Sergeant Landau stopped, I, I thought that was the body. I didn't know what he looked like. Oh, well, I guess it was my fault. I should have described him to you. Anyway, you got away with it. They gave you the death certificate and they sent the body to the Winston funeral home. It came so near to getting caught. But luckily, you acted upset enough to save us. We may not be so lucky the next time. There won't be a next time. From here on, there won't be any trouble for us. Sam, please, let's forget about the whole thing. Are you crazy? Before it's too late. We can still save ourselves. We can say you had amnesia and just turned up. They'll believe that. And let $50,000 slip through our fingers? But we never did anything wrong in our lives. You know we're not the kind of people to do a thing like this. Someone's at the door. All right, get hold of yourself and answer it. Who could it be? I'll... I'll hide in the closet here. Mrs. Braden? Yes? Uh, my name is Granger. I'm from the Acme Insurance Company. Sure. Uh, I'm here in regard to your husband's death. Uh, oh, C come in, please. Thank you. I'll just be a moment. I, I don't want to bother you unnecessarily at a time like this, but... Before the company pays you the double indemnity benefits of your late husband's policy, you'll be required to sign these papers. Now, uh, you may mail them in if you choose, or you may sign them right now, and I'll take them back to the office with me. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll sign them now. Uh, very well. Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Braden. Yes, Mr. Green. Uh, where will the services be held? The Winston Funeral Home in Crestview. Tomorrow? Yes, at ten in the morning. I'll be there. You'll be there? I, I don't understand. To pay my respects. You see, Mrs. Braden, I knew your husband quite well, some years ago, when I sold him the policy. April 17th, 1950, Inner Sanctum Mysteries on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, more of Inner Sanctum Mysteries, Beneficiary Death, from April 17th, 1950. Personally, I feel kind of sorry for that Sam Braden. The only way he can make a decent living is by being dead. Hmm? <laughs> well, that's fate for you. Everything was going pretty well until that insurance guy Granger turned up and said he was going to pay his last respects to Sam... You see what happens when you fool around with death? Things go from bad to hers. <laughs> well, now let's get back to our tale and the troubled Braden. Of all people for the insurance company to send out here, it had to be Granger. I told you we couldn't get away with it. Well, we're not finished yet. Granger told you that you'd probably get the check from the insurance company tomorrow. But in the meantime, he'll go to the Winston funeral home. He'll know that's not you in the casket. He'll never know. What are you doing? Something we should have done right after Granger left here earlier this evening. Here. Take this phone. I've dialed the Winston Funeral Home. But why? When they answer, you tell them that you've changed your mind. There'll be no services tomorrow. You've just found a paper signed by your husband in which he requested that he be cremated immediately after death. They'll be suspicious. I'll write the note now. That'll cover it. Haven't they answered yet? No. Got to get that body out of there before tomorrow morning. Still no answer? No, not yet. I better hang up. It must be closed for the night. If we wait until tomorrow morning, it'll be too late. Then what'll we do? There's only one thing to do, Helen. We're going over to the funeral home and get that body out ourselves. <laughs> Try the back door down at the end of this alley. We'll never get away with it. I've had the feeling all along you that... You stop talking like that, Helen. Don't you understand? It's worth any risk we take to get that 50000 But I told you I don't want the money. Wait and see. When you get your hands on it, you'll feel differently. Here's the back door. It's locked, isn't it? Well, of course. What did you expect? There's no way we can get in. Yes, there is. I'll break the glass panel and then reach in and turn the lock. Someone might hear us. You're just making things worse by talking that way. Besides, we looked out in front, didn't we? There's not a soul around. 
Yes, I'll need something to break the glass. What can I use? I know. Helen, give me your compact. Here. This compact should do fine. Oh, oh, oh. Sam, you cut yourself. I guess I'm not much of an expert on housebreaking. Don't you see? We can't do any of this, right? Because we're not people for a thing like this. Then we'll make ourselves that kind of people. We'll manage. We did so far. I'll have this door unlocked in a second. There. All right, come on, Helen. Can't I wait here? No, no, I need your help. Come on. Sam, I'm so frightened. You mustn't be. Just try to think of the money. Just try to think of all the pleasure we'll have with it. Never enjoy it. We'll never have a happy moment again. Please, Helen, don't say things like that. Here are the caskets. I'll see what this tag says. Sarah Adams. All right, we try the next one. Samuel Braden. All right, Helen, you get down at the other end and help me lift the lid. Oh, Sam, please, I can't. I just can't. All right, I'd do it myself. <gasps> Helen, what's wrong? What is it? The coffin. There's no one in it. The coffin is empty. But, but you had the body sent here from the morgue. Yes. And this coffin tag has my name on it. What could have happened to the corpse? Where can it be? Sam. Someone came in. Footsteps. They're coming this way. I can't let anybody see me, and there's no time to get out the rear way. Wait. I know where to hide. Sam, what are you doing? The only safe thing. I'll hide in this coffin. What'll I do? What'll I say? I don't know, but try to carry it off the best you can. Good evening, Mrs. Brayton. I had an idea I might find you here. Oh, you don't have to be afraid of me. I won't hurt you. Who are you? My name is Stephen Winston. You own this place. That's right. We've, we've never met. How do you know who I am? I've made a point of knowing Mrs. Brayton. As a matter of fact, I've just come from your house. I'd planned on having a talk with you about the ceremonies tomorrow. Oh, uh, by the way, don't you know it's illegal to force your way into an establishment? But I, I tried to get you on the phone, Mr. Winston. There, there was no answer. I thought perhaps your line was out of order, so I came down. I, I wanted to talk to you, too. About the ceremonies? Yes. Do you mind telling me how you got in here? The rear door was open. It's odd. I distinctly remember having bolted it. However, first I have something very interesting to show you. Mr. Winston, what are you doing? Lift up this coffin lid. No, no, don't. Why not? I, I, I can't, can't bear to see you. Well, that isn't the reason, is it, Mrs. Braden? That isn't the reason at all. What, what do you mean? You've already opened this coffin. You know there's no body in it. Isn't that the reason? Yes. I thought so. You probably wonder what's happened to the body that was in it. Well, I'm happy to relieve your mind of the anxiety. I have the body down in the basement, hidden. Oh. Why, why did you hide my husband's body? You can drop the act, Mrs. Braden. I know that wasn't your husband's body. You know? Yes, of course. I once met your husband. I rarely forget a face. The police would be very interested in your game, but uh, the police don't have to know, necessarily. What do you mean by that? Now, look, Mrs. Brayden, I'm a businessman. The police don't have to know about this at all, providing you make it worth my while. You want money? Yes. Ten thousand dollars should seem to be a fair sum. I suggest, Mrs. Braden, that you get in touch with your dear departed husband and tell him my terms. Ten thousand. Or jail for both of you. Sam, it's been hours. Thought you'd never get back here to the house. It became light out. 
I had to be careful no one saw me. Winston knows everything. It was he who took the body out of the casket. Yes, Helen, I know. I heard from inside the coffin. He wants money. We mustn't give it to him. Of course not. He'd go on blackmailing us until he got every cent of the 50000 That's not what I mean, sir. And the conclusion of Inner Sanctum Mysteries from April 17, 1950, when Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox continues following these messages from your favorite radio station. Here's Mike Lindell talking about getting your best friend something special. And Mike, you've done it again. You've brought us an amazing line of dog beds. This has been a long time coming. It starts with the same patented fill for your dogs now as we do my pillow. I wanted everything covered in sizes from your largest dog to your smallest dog. You can throw them in the washer and dryer. The dogs love it. They asked and we, here they are. This is why you get the dog bed. This is the main reason. The dogs love it. And you've got that 10 year warranty, right? I can do it because the dogs love it. They don't want to wreck their bed. And you can get these MyPillow dog beds at a price lower than the big box stores, as low as $19.95. Call 1-800-928-4715, 1-800-928-4715, or go to MyPillow.com slash pet and use my promo code Wyatt. Treat your best friend to a MyPillow dog bed. MyPillow.com slash pet. Promo code Wyatt. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the conclusion of Inner Sanctum Mysteries, Beneficiary Death, starring Everett Sloan, April 17th, 1950. It's a good thing you didn't tell him I was in that coffin. (laughs) Darling, please listen to me. I've been waiting for you to come home. I I wanted you to be the one to call the police. Call the police? You've got to. If we make a clean breast of everything now, they may not be too hard on us. We're not telling the police anything. Then Winston will. No, he won't. Winston is dead. What? I killed him. I buried his body where it will never be found. Sir. I I had to do it, Helen. Things had gotten so that I just had to. Helen, do you have to keep standing at the window there looking at the birds down in the garden? Why don't you talk to me? Talk? What can I say? You can find something to say to make me feel a little better about it. How can you feel better about killing a man? It isn't that I wanted to do it. I had to. You've got to understand that I never had the makings of a murderer in me. No, Sam, you didn't. Until the thought of that $50,000 made you one. Why do you keep saying that? There's nothing I can do about it now. I can't go to the police. They'll sentence me to death. You wouldn't want that, would you? No, Sam, I wouldn't want that. Well, then what can I do? I don't know. Well, there's one thing I know we've got to do, and that's move away from here where no one will know us. Maybe then we can start over again. Maybe then things will be all right between us. Maybe. Sure they will. <laughs> the 50,000 will make all the difference. Sam. What's the matter? Why are you looking at me that way? We can't take that money now. After all I've done? After what you've done, that's just the reason. You're not making sense. We couldn't get anywhere without money. We'd have to get it some way. We need a lot of money to... Helen, look. There's the mailman coming down the walk. I bet he's got the insurance company check with him now. You better go down and see. All right. Why did you stop, Helen? All you have to do is go down the stairs and open the door. I've made up my mind, Sam. We're not taking the money. But but you know we need it to save ourselves. Not that kind of money. Now, look, the mailman must have that check. That's why he's ringing the bell. It was sent registered. You have to sign for it. I'm not going down to get it. You are. Hurry, before he goes away. Now, go on. Look, Sam, let go of me. I'm not answering that ring. Yes, you are. You're opening that door and signing for that letter. I have to drag you down. Please, let me... Helen, get out of Helen! 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 Sam. 
I, I didn't mean it, darling. I didn't mean it. I didn't. I... No, you didn't. You couldn't help yourself. I understand. Sam. Yes? The money. You can't have it now. I'd have to sign the check and I... I won't be able to. I'm glad about that. It wasn't meant for us. Never would have brought us up. Happy. <laughs> Operator, will you please get me the Merrick police? Hello? Is Sergeant Landau there? No, no, he won't have to call back. Message? Yes. Just tell him that Sam Braden is on his way over. Now that's what I call a significant ending. No doubt there for whom the doorbell tolls. That Sam and Helen show were bunglers. They handled a cold corpse like it was a hot potato. But before Sam went the way of all burnt flesh for the insurance murder, he was heard to say that honesty is the best policy. Well, anyway, now he's got a coffin to call his own. Footnote. I, I mean, uh, six footnote. Never commit a murder after midnight, because it might bring you straight into morning. <laughs> It's time to close that creaking door on tonight's Inner Sanctum, which featured Everett Sloan as Sam and Barbara Weeks as Helen. The music was by Lou White, and the entire production was directed by Hyman Brown. Tonight, friends, we close the creaking door for several weeks while Inner Sanctum takes a short vacation. We'll be back soon, so be sure to listen for that familiar creaking door. Oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery Novel is The Motive by Evelyn Piper. Until we meet again, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. The last show of the 1949-1950 season, Inner Sanctum Mysteries on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now, if you've been following our uh, recent run of Lum and Abner's, the story so far is in trying to spiff up the jot em down store, Lum and Abner got Cedric to clean off all the cans. Not only did he clean off all the cans, he also scrubbed off all the labels of the cans. So the uh, uh, Lum and Abner and the uh, they were going to run for the jot em down store, run a grab bag sale, twenty five cents a can, and he, but if you guessed what was inside the can, you got it for free. And they didn't have a lot of luck with people guessing. A lot of guys tried, a lot of folks failed, but then Grandpap was able to figure it out, like right away. So let's rejoin Lum and Abner down in the Jot em Down store in Pine Ridge, Arkansas, April 17th, 1953. By the way, thanks to Ted at RadioMemories.com. Hey, Granny Abner, I believe that's our ring. I don't get Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, Jot em Down store. This is Lum and Abner. <laughs> And now, 
Now let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Howdy, folks. This is Dick Huddleston. Well, sir, Grandpappy Spears put the kibosh on Lum and Abner's grab bag sale when he discovered some mysterious system for guessing the contents of the unlabeled canned goods in the Jotham Down store. They wouldn't let Grandpap in the store anymore, so he set up shop outside the store and charged folks for telling them what to guess and thus get their canned goods free. So the sale goes disastrously on, and Lum and Abner can't figure out what to do about it. Dad blamed that grandpap anyway. Look at him sitting out there grinning and taking in money for them tips he's giving everybody. Yeah. How's he do it, Lum? How does that varmint know how to tell him what's in them cans? I don't know. I do not know. It's got me half crazy. Dogus, how does he do it? I tell you, I laid awake all night long trying to figure that out. He just driving me out of my mind. Me too. This is the bafflingest one thing I've ever been up again. How does he do it? I just wish I knowed. Well, Lom, it's got something to do with that bad blame telescope he's got out there. Uh, no, but what? Just look at him sitting out there, acting so important. You'd think he was a Kang or something. Yeah. That blame sign he's got sitting out there. Stop here for advice on how to get your canned goods free. Ten cents a tip. <laughs> Bounty, he's taken in over ten dollars so far. Abner, don't get so close to the window. I don't want him to see us looking at him. I don't want him to think we're worried at all. Lom, he knows we're worried. Any time a body's going to bankrupt, why, well, they're bound to be worried. And if they ain't, they must have rocks in their head. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to give Grandpap the satisfaction of knowing he's bankrupting us. Well, Lom, ain't there some way of stopping him? Can't we run him out of there? No, not legal. Well, you got him out of the store by threatening to get out an injunction against him. Can't you get up another injunction to run him off our property? That's the trouble. He ain't on our property. He's sitting out there half a foot off of it. It's public where he's at. Yes, huh? Yeah, and there ain't no law I know of that says a man can't be on public property. Well, ain't there some law about being a public nuisance? Well, he ain't no public nuisance, though. He's doing the public a big favor. Yeah. Getting them canned goods for practical nothing. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's just call off the sale then, Lum. That's the thing to do. Just call it off. Well, then we wouldn't have no business at all. Folks ain't going to pay good money for a lot of cans when they don't know what's in them. No, no, that's right. But we sure ain't making no money on the business we're doing now. Everybody's getting all their canned goods free. Well, once in a while somebody misses and then we take in a quarter. And then, too, we're making a little on selling fruit jars so they can carry the stuff home after we open the cans to see if they guessed right. Yeah, but even that's falling off. Like now, everybody now is bringing their own fruit jars with them. Yeah, I know it. Dad, blame that grandpa. Believe I'll just go out there and run him off barehanded. I'll fist fight him. No, now, don't do that. I'll scuffle with the varmint. No, that'll just get us in more trouble, Abner. He could lawsuit us for assaulting and batteries or something. Well, what are we going to do then, Lum? I ain't going to just sit here and let him ruin her. Well, I ain't neither. What we've got to do is figure out how Grandpap tells what's in them cans. Then we can do it ourselves and go back to selling merchandise like we used to. Yeah, but how are we ever going to figure out or wait just a minute? Dogan, I believe I got an idea. No, oh, no, that's no good, I reckon. What was it? No, 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 I don't want that critter hanging around in here. Well, what was your idea? No use telling you, because I'm again it. Dad, blame it, Abner. Tell me what it was. Well, I just thought as long as Grandpap knows what's in all them cans, why, we could hire him for a clerk here in the store. Hire Grandpap? My Granny's, wait a minute, Abner. You have got a good idea there. Well, might be a good one, but I'm again it. Now, wait a minute, No, Abner. no, no, no. I hate to go again my own ideas that way, but I just don't want to have no truck with that old Billy Goat. All right, I'll tell you what, then. When he's working in here, you can be out making the delivers. And if there ain't no delivers, you can stay home. And I'll call you when we need you. Well, let me think that over now, just a We've minute. We've got to do it, Abner. It's the only way we're ever going to realize anything out of these canned goods. Yeah, well, I reckon you're right. Wish I hadn't studied up the idea. Come, come on, let's talk to him right now. Open the window there. Sometimes it's a handicap being smart as I am. Hurry up and get the window up, Abner. I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Yeah, holler at Grandpap. Hey, Grandpap! Grandpap! Mr. Avery Milford Spears! Yeah, what do you want, Mr. Abner Peabody? Me and Lom's got an idea we won't talk to you about. Er, Lom has. I ain't for it, I'll tell you that right now. Well, I don't even know what it is. And I ain't for it neither. See there, Lom? The deal's off. Well, now, wait a minute. Grandpap don't know what it is yet. 
Now, here's the idea, Granddad. He's again it, Lom. We're getting pretty swamped with work in here with this grab bag sale and all. We could use an extra hand, special somebody that knows the stock like you seem to. What do you say, Grandpap? Would you like to work for us? I'll be out making a deal ever, so I won't be around here much. I can't come in your pigeon toad store. You throwed me out of there. Got that inner junctions again me. Yeah, well, just forget about that, Grandpap. How about it, huh? Well, I don't know. Okay, deal's off. No, now, wait a minute. It'll be a nice, easy job, Grandpap. You can just sit in the rocker in here, in a nice comfort rocker, instead of that uncomfort when you got out there, and... All you'll have to do is point out which canned goods is which when customers want hominy or baked beans or whatever it is they want. Don't get a wish I could get a job like that. Well, I'll tell you, I got a pretty good business going right here. Uh, I'm making a dime on every can you fellas sell in there. Every can we give away, you mean? Well, that's your business. That grab bag sale was your idea, not mine. Yeah, but you're the one that's ruining it for us. He wasn't sitting out there giving tips Abner, to everybody. Abner. We'd be making some money instead Abner. of going broke. Hush up. Well, I don't care. That blame his honor and hide anyway. Better watch it, Abner. That's hard on your blood pressures. Flying off in the handlebars that way. Oh, keep quiet. Well, what about it, Grandpa? Do you want the job? I hope he don't. Well, it's like I say, Lum. I'm making ten cents a can on everything you sell right now. So if you boost that up to fifteen cents a can, I'll take it. Fifteen cents a can. Fifteen? Grannies, we don't make that much ourselves. We couldn't pay that. We'd be losing money. Doggies, yes. Well, that's my proposition. Take it or leave it. Grandpap, you're a robber. I'll load down now, under just handed... Just a minute here. I'm doing you a favor. I'm giving you a chance to take in some money on the canned goods. The way it is now, you ain't taking in nothing. Doggies, I ought to come out there and pop Shut the you. window. Huh? Close the window and stop talking. Oh. Yeah. If you want to take my proposition, let me know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thieving robber, low down, underhanded. Well, of course, barnet. he has got a point there, and he knows he's got us right where he wants us. Getting to where I hate and despise his honor hide. I hate to do business on that kind of a base, though. Just ain't right. I wouldn't do it if it was right. Tell you that right now. I don't want to have no trouble. Just got to find out how he tells what's in them cans and beat him at his own game. Well, you reckon he's a mind reader? Or a tin can reader, I mean? No, there's got to be a logic explanation of this thing some way or other. Let's take it step by step now. Well, I'll tell you my opinions if you want them. It's got something to do with that telescope he's got out there with him. I don't know what it is exactly, but something. Maybe that's a magical telescope, Plum. No, there ain't no such a thing, I don't think. Well, uh, maybe it's got one of them uh, extra ray machines inside of it there. You know, one of them things that see through thing? No, there ain't no such a thing, I don't think. Well, maybe it's got an extra ray machine inside of it there. No, there ain't room in it for that. And here's another thing we got to remember. At first, he didn't use no telescope. When he was in the store guessing, he didn't look through no telescope or nothing else. Yeah, that's right, eh? Yeah. I'd still have to get a look through that thing, though. Find out just what he's looking at. So would I. But I don't know how we're going to do it. You know, good and well, if that's got anything to do with it, he ain't going to let us look through it. No. Give his whole secret away, if that's it. Well, Long, we just got to get him away from that telescope some way. But how, I don't know. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Huh? You know how serious he takes that telegram deliver job of his. Oh, he thinks that's the grandest one job in the world. All right. We'll send somebody in town a telegram. You'll have to go over to Dick Huddleston's to get it and deliver it. While he's doing that, we'll look through the telescope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, because that's a good idea. Uh, who, who are we going to send a telegram to? Well, it don't matter. Just anybody. Your woman, Lizbeth, you want to. Oh, no, not her, Lum. She'd think dead away if she ever got a telegram. Well, I'll think of somebody. I'll call over to Dick Huddleston's store right now. Well, this will cost us money now, Lum. Got to. You know, they charge for sending them telegrams. I don't care. It's worth it. Let's see. Uh, who can we send a telegram to? Hello, Dick. This is Lum. Say, Dick, I want to send a telegram. Oh, it's to, uh... Hey, uh, how about Cedric? He never gets no telegram. Oh, uh, to Cedric Weehart. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, let's see, uh... Well, just don't say nothing in it. Just leave it blank. I know, but... Well, this is a secret code, I think. Dog it. I don't or, know that. Or just sign it, uh, Grover Cleveland. <laughs> well, it's sort of a joke, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a joke on Grandpap, I know that. <laughs> All right, fine, Dick. I'll send Grandpap over to deliver it. Yeah. So long. Well, it's worked so far. Now, tell Grandpap to get over there. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, Grandpap. Grandpap, you better get over to Dick Hoddleston's. How's that? We were just talking to Dick on the phone, and there's a telegram over there for you to deliver. Oh, much obliged. Don't get it work long. Look at him ski daddle. Well, come on, <laughs> let's get out there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Dad, blame it. What's the matter? Well, he come back and got his telescope there. Look at him. That low-down, ornery varmint. <laughs> Boy, uh, well, one way or another, Lum and Abner from uh, April 17th, 1953, as they keep working on this mess. And by the way, thanks to Ted at RadioMemories.com for providing us these great shows on cassette, CD, or flash drive for your computer. He can do the same for you. That is RadioMemories.com, RadioMemories.com. Thanks for making us a part of your day. We thank this station and support their advertisers. Hope you will as well. Uh, It's their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be with you each and every time we roll around here on your favorite radio station. Now, if you miss a day, you don't have to miss a single show. All of our shows are available on demand at ClassicRadio.stream. We provide 21 hours of great classic radio theater programs each and every week, and you can find them all there at ClassicRadio.stream. Stream our shows. Learn about building a classic radio collection of your own. You can contact me there, find our social media links. And if you would certainly like to help, you can buy me a coffee. That buy me a coffee money helps us acquire additional classic radio collections uh, for us to bring to you here on this program. Classicradio.stream. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Tell all your friends the greatest radio shows of all time are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.